All right. Thank you, Dominic. So, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Mark Plogas. I'm a Windows App Consult Engineer and Azure App Consult Engineer at Microsoft. And uh, recently, I was given the opportunity to work with the WinUI product group uh, right before build, before we introduced uh, the preview one. And uh, this why, that's why I was getting very interested in the whole WinUI 3 story. And this is what I would like to share with you today. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So the topic is obviously hello WinUI 3. And as I just said, WinUI 3 is still in a preview, in a very early preview state. So it's not that it's right for, that you can use it in your production apps right now. We'll get to the roadmap later on. But first, what is the current state? What's going on now? So basically, in 1992, when Microsoft released Windows 3.1 and computers were still gray and bulky, uh, the state of the U, uh, state of the art UI framework was MFC. Um, it was programmed in C++ and built around the Windows common controls, such as buttons and all those things. And it matured for almost 10 years until Windows Forms was released in 2002 as part of the new back then .NET framework. The high level language and the editor introduced great productivity improvement, but it didn't quite replace MFC as it's only supported .NET languages. So MFC remained as the go-to UI framework for native C++ development. Well, WinForms and .NET were pretty successful, but let's be honest, WinForm applications tend to turn into spaghettis when they evolve over time, so um, as both and architecture-wise. So um, in 2006 or 2007, a new UI paradigm was introduced and WPF was made available to the .NET developers. It allowed more complex architecture, hardware, accelerated UI, introduced XAML as a declarative XML-based language as interface markup language. And with its decoupling from UI and logic and commands, a much cleaner architecture pattern quickly gained traction, namely MVVM. And while WPF is very powerful, many legacy apps were built in WinForms, which was, well, still is, in active development and the new paradigm uh, and the new markup language didn't quite convince every developer immediately. And yes, obviously, there is always an XKCD for that. And that matter, this is the one with the competing standards. So yeah, um, we now have three standards. And there was still no native C++ framework. But in 2012, we had another, yet another paradigm shift. Well, actually, a couple of those in a short order. Um, if you remember with Win 8, Windows 8, we introduced a new style of apps, then back then referred as Metro apps, nowadays known as Store apps. And as you might remember, the road was bumpy, but eventually uh, evolved in what is today known as UWP XAML apps, or commonly called Windows 10 apps. Um, this framework, uh, also brings multiple concepts known from the mobile world to Windows, sandbox, self-containing, so no external dependencies, unified design language, multi-platform, and on top, it was available for C++ and .NET apps. However, the new paradigm didn't fully convince the developers yet again, to rebuild their applications for UWP. Well, the Win 10 exclusivity played a big role in that regard, but also the limitations that came from the sandbox paradigm. For example, you couldn't access a couple of uh, folders on your computer that you were used to before with the Win32 applications and things like that. And well, what, you know what? Now we're here with 16 standards. Well, not quite, obviously, but we have now four competing standards. And one of them is uh, 28 years old, which is basically older than my eternal 20 years old of age. Anyhow, Enter Project Reunion. And so we think it's time for a bit of a cleanup. Well, not really a cleanup, but maybe getting things straight. And this is what Project Reunion is all about. The teams were busy breaking down the barriers between both worlds and both 
the desktop APIs and the UWP APIs in the last few years, and they started to unify, uh, unify existing APIs by decoupling them from the operating system and making them available through NuGet. This will be the common platform for the next generation of Windows apps, obviously with a star, because we are starting this right now with an initial minimum version of uh, Windows 10 1809, um, which is two years old now, so that's okay. Furthermore, this will also help you updating and modernizing um, apps, um, whether they are written in C++ or .NET, or now as a new first-class citizen, even React Native. And those different paradigms, such as MFC and WinForms and WPF and UWP, will be supported too. So whenever possible, new Windows functionality will be delivered as part of the project reunion family. Um, So um, one of the first components in this grand journey is going to be the UI with WinUI 3. WinUI stands for Windows UI Library, and um, some of you might already know about it since it's a product in market today. The previous version, WinUI 2, has been the Windows UI library for the common Windows UI controls for UWP XAML apps. Um, it's quite major already because it's publicly available for more, almost two years. And uh, the great thing about WinUI 2 has been the uh, down level compatibility with earlier versions of Windows 10, well, obviously to a degree. And uh, so your app would even work if your users don't have the latest version of uh, Windows 10. So um, while WinUI 2 is, is a library for controls and styles for UWP XAML, WinUI 3 is literally the entire code base of UWP XAML plus all the UW, uh, WinUI 2 controls and styles and the entire Windows 10 visuals, visual layer wrapped into a single framework. This will ship independently from the operating system, so it will follow its own cadence, just as WinUI 2 does today. But this time, it's not only for UWP, but for any type of apps, both UWP and desktop or Win32 applications. So you might ask another framework, so this is gonna be number 17 then? Yes, of course, but this time it's not a bad thing actually. First. We will offer the latest uh, Fluent controls to any app and any paradigm. Second, the framework itself is implemented in C++. So no matter what language you are using, you will get the native performance and it doesn't require the CLR because back then um, the CLR was al always pulled into your project even if you actually didn't need it. So this time it's without the CLR, it's plain C++. So as fast as it can get. And third, because it's decoupled from the operation system cadence, you will basically update your packages at your own pace and you can start migrating whenever you feel the need for. So no need for doing it right now or latest by that release or something like that. So will it be the one framework to rule them all? No. This is uh, actually quite nice about this, and this is something we have learned. It's not meant to fully replace the existing frameworks because uh, we assume there will be will still be good reasons to use previous technologies, um, like we talked about earlier. For example, if your current app, uh, be it an MFC app, is in a state that meets your or your customers' uh, needs just fine, I mean, why upgrade? Don't upgrade. If your dev teams are MFC pros, or you're developing for older operating systems or older hardware, why upgrade? You don't need to upgrade. Um, so it's not about, it's not really about replacing the previous frameworks, but offering a migration path for you or for the developers to modernize your app if you feel the need to. For example, if you want to leverage native performance on modern devices with high DPI screens and ink input. Something which has, for example, the Surface has or the modern Dell and, and HP devices are providing. And also, and this is something which 
may get into the mind of people because we already had some history of that. It will also not silverlight the UWP. So it will not be obsolete. Instead, it's like this continuation of UWP XAML. So basically, it's UWP XAML V next in a way. Well, don't tell the product group I call it V next. Um, so what's in, in the roadmap? Um, so the first alpha, internal alpha, has been released in February with an uh, included web view, which is based on the Chromium, because as you may remember, we have also shifted our Edge browser from our own engine to the Chromium engine, and thus we needed to shift the web view as well. And with build 2020, the first preview was uh, publicly released, and this allowed uh, Win32 apps uh, to use WinUI in addition to UWP apps. Um, one of the early example, uh, one of the early samples um, was the Magix Vegas Pro showcase that I that I built. Um, this has been featured in the keynote and in various talks uh, at Build. And um, my task was basically to rebuild this iconic uh, color picker in WinUI XAML and host, host this in an MFC dummy Vegas Pro application. And as you can see, it works with view models already and those things. So, yeah. This is what we were able to do um, a couple of months ago with the uh, first preview. Um, preview two has arrived during summer in July. Um, and this one was mainly about uh, bug fixes and stability updates and only minor feature upgrades. And this is basically where we are right now. And now, the and basically, the entire um, um, planning now gets a little bit fuzzy because next week is Ignite and we might bring a new preview three with new features, but maybe not um, because we're still committed to bring at least another preview this year, but due to the challenges of 2020, it's likely that the next release, maybe the November one, I don't know, uh, maybe the Ignite one won't be the go live um, release. Um, so it uh, won't be go live compatible, let's put it that way, because go live in that regard means that the features are all there or like the important features are, there, are all there and that the, the API is stable and all those things. Well, we can't really promise this, um, but it is expected to be uh, with a later release, maybe even in early 2021. And the worst case, we were just shipping previews with new features after preview with new features right into 2021 until we as developers and obviously you as community agree on a final 3.0 state. In any way, development is open sourced. So not only the entire XAML layer code base will be available, but also the entire planning and issue tracking as well. It can be found on the GitHub. Okay, so that was always nice and fun, but let's get started with WinUI 3. So first of all, what are the requirements if you want to get started? Well, obviously you will need to have like Windows 10 and the earliest version that you have to use right now is Windows 10 1809. Um, then you will need a Visual Studio.NET 2019 preview. Um, well, the minimum requirement for the preview would be 16.7.2, but given that the latest Visual Studio 2019 preview is 16.4, uh, 16.8, uh, preview 3 already, um, it's perfectly fine to use the latest version. And then if you install the preview, uh, you need to make sure that you have installed the .NET Desktop Development Workload, the Universal Windows Platform Development Workload. And if you want to work with uh, desktop apps and C++, you will need to add the desktop development with C++ workload and the C++ UWP tools v version 14.2. Um, this is something that's not like a real workload, but this is something which which are basically like those additional tools that you can uh, select from the second tab. Uh, on top of that, you will need the .NET 5 SDK 
preview. Obviously, it's not released yet. And I suggest going with like both architectures, like X86 and X64. I mean, if you are pretty sure that you're just going with the 64-bit something, you don't actually need the other one, but I suggest or I recommend installing both. And last but not least, you will need obviously the, the project templates. Um, you can get those by installing the WinUI 3 Preview 2 VSIX templates. If you happen to have installed the Preview 1 template, you need to deinstall those before you install them because otherwise, just do it. Don't. <laughs> no, uh, you, will, you will get a warning, but if you ignore that warning, well, it won't work. So, um, speaking of the templates, there are a couple of templates available. Um, one is the obviously the, the, the basic one would be the blank app UWP, uh, WinUI and UWP. This is available for C Sharp and C++. And it's, and it's there for creating UWP apps based on the new WinUI 3 library. You have also, the, uh, you can also create desktop apps. Um, Blank desktop app would be the template, and it's also available for C++ and C Sharp. Uh, and C Sharp, and you can create desktop apps with the WinUI 3 library. And on top, you get the MSIX packaging project for various distribution scenarios such as site loading, enterprise, or Microsoft Store. Then there's the class library. Um, which is um, available for UW and P, UWP and desktop targets. However, it's only available for C Sharp since it's creating a managed class library. And last but not least, there is the Windows runtime component. This one is available for C and C Sharp. And um, this one creates basically. Um, yeah, a runtime component. And when you, I, so you have to know when you, I use the new C sharp uh, WinRT projections as the, as the WinUI 3 framework is basically a set of WinRT components. And while WinRT has similar types and objects as those found in .NET, they are not inherently compatible. So the, Win, uh, the C Sharp WinRT projections handle the interop between .NET and WinRT. And this allows you to use WinUI objects in a .NET app. However, this also results in a weird or bad logical behavior because you can share a C plus plus WinRT component with any of the WinUI project types, for example, desktop C++ or UWP C Sharp. However, you can't share it the other way around. So you can't share the Win C Sharp WinRT component with, uh, for example, C++ um, 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 desktop uh, project. And while we are talking about Windows Runtime or WinRT, um, the WinUI, so this is something just to explain it a little bit more. Um, the WinUI uh, 3 NuGet package has a dependency, like the, the, the C Sharp or the managed one, has a dependency on the C Sharp WinRT NuGet package, which brings the WinRT runtime DLL and the CS WinRT exit tool. And this tool consumes the metadata uh, file that defines the RT libraries, like the Native ones, and this and the tool like the CS1RT tool uh, generates this uh, interop .NET 5 code, which is standard .NET standard 2.0, and this interop code is then used by the WinRT runtime uh, library. So th that way you can basically, or that way you have access to from the .NET scenario or from 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 managed code to the native. Um, Controls. Speaking of controls, um, let's have a look at the controls, which controls are available. And there is this um, XAML control gallery app available in the Microsoft Store, which is basically like a complete collection of all the uh, controls available to WinUI 3 or WinUI and Win WinUI 2 and WinUI 3 at the moment. And um, let's have a quick look in the tool. So basically, this is um, the tool. 
Um, you have, uh, uh, so the, the interesting thing is, first of all, it, it basically lists all the controls. So if you're interested in, in or looking for a specific tool, this is basically the go-to uh, place to look. And this not only lists the tool, but also offers, for example, um, implementation um, help. For example, let's go for the drop-down button. And as you can see, you have a little bit, uh, you have a small sample. If you click that, you will see how this particular uh, code will look. And you will have the actual code. Sorry, you have the actual code here as well. And there you can see, OK, this might be looking that way and then would need to use that type of XAML in order to work with that. Or, I mean, for example, if you want to have a drop down with icons, then you have the right. Uh, code and, and the right demo here. There are other controls, for example, the rating control, which is pretty new to Renew i3, which is not available to other platforms yet, uh, although you can backport this using some islands. But anyway, um, so as you can see, you have this simple rating control here list, listed here. Then you can test it. You have the XAML listed here. And uh, you have the different options here. For example, if you want to start with uh, placeholder value, for example, if you want to rate your podcasts or video streams and stuff like that. There are other controls I would like to show you because they might be helpful in a bit when I come to the other demo. Um, for example, we do have a tree view in, uh, in uh, the control gallery app. Um, as you can see, we have a regular tree view and stuff like uh, drag and drop is already built in. Um, yes, I'm obviously making it all kaput. Um, but as you can see, you can drag and drop, you can work with that, you can have uh, multiple checkboxes and you can have icons in front of it. Um, you can have, for example, there is media available, um, for example, and this is a feature I wanted to show you later on as well. You can have the ink feature where you can work with your awesome drawing skills. Just by adding this one, you will add to your app inking cap capabilities if you need it. Or if you want to use um, the media player, uh, yeah, this one is with autoplay and sound. Um, um, I'm going away from that, <laughs> but yeah. So as you can see, um, there are a couple of controls already available, already set up, and the implementation is there. But it's not only the controls, but for example, if you're interested in an anim an animation, because um, the entire WinUI 3 uh, layer will bring you also the entire animation set. For example, if you want to have some fancy animations for for your image gallery, then just look here and there you have the link to the XAML source code and so on. So give it a try. If you are a designer and want to work and want to see what controls are available and what controls can help you uh, moving forward with your application. Um, up, um, speaking of moving forward from your application, so one of the scenarios uh, with migrating from UW would be migrating from UWP XAML. So um, upgrading from UWP is obviously a breeze. I mean, first of all, obviously keep in mind we still haven't locked down the API yet. So uh, please don't use it in production and ship it yet. It will change. But uh, since WinUI is built on what's available on UWP, you'll get what you have right now, plus the new controls and new features. For example, the Chromium-based web view, the full set of Fluent Design-based uh, controls, better input validation, and so on. Um, and um, as I said, it's now completely decoupled from the OS cadence. And so updates will be more frequent. And uh, so there is, once it reaches finishing or, or like a final state, there is basically no reason to not upgrade. 
um, simply because it also offers backwards compatibility. So it's not like if you are switching to WinUI 3, then a couple of UWP features won't work anymore. It will, it definitely will work because the backwards compatibility compatibility is basically set and expected. The most, I would say, common scenario, uh, however, would be the uh, task of modernizing the Win32 or Win or desktop applications. Um, before we start, let me highlight one of the limitation, uh, limitations WinUI has. It only works on Windows 10. So no support for Windows 7, no support for Windows 2000, no support for Windows ME and other Windows editions you might know <laughs> and you have seen in your in your previous life. So if you are trying to have the fluent design on Windows 7, for example, I suggest uh, having a look uh, on the UNO platform because the UNO platform Will run on will run using Mono WebAssembly. Um, so yeah, this is a bit tricky now because the decade old operating system like Windows Seven only brings the uh, brings Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer doesn't support WebAssembly, so I'm not sure if the Chromium-based browsers still support Windows Seven. So this might be a bit in a flux, but your best bet on getting the Fluent design on Windows 7 is UNO, I think. And the UNO platform also supports uh, other uh, platforms such as Android, native Android, native iOS, macOS, Linux, Xamarin native, and so on, all through uh, um, WebAssembly. Now, let's assume your company still has this decade old application which does, for example, budgeting or vacation management or brewing coffee, and it's still running perfectly fine on most of your Windows 10 PCs. Well, except on newer devices, you will find that your application has blurry text, maybe uh, boxes, text boxes are cut off or shows like really weird behavior. And this is most likely caused by this missing high DPI setting. Um, in that regard, my all-time favorite is <laughs> the strike through text in an older team view viewer application. It took us a while to figure out what the issue was, and it was the missing high DPI compatibility. So if you experience any weird behavior, then it might be that. I mean, it, it maybe it's not the issue with your problem, but maybe you want to add some inking capabilities to your application. Well, WinUI 3 offers basically two ways to modernize your app. So the first one is obviously an entire UI overhaul. And this one is pretty straightforward, assuming your UI layer is already somewhat decoupled from your business logic. All you need to do is adding the WinUI 3 dependencies to your project and start building the new UI with XAML. So this was basically what I, what I did with the uh, Vegas Pro demo because that everything was the, the the Vegas Pro guys didn't obviously give me the entire Vegas Pro application, but they just gave me some kind of like um, light shell so I could start playing and using this a little bit. So if you do, if you go that way, this will give your users, once it's finished, a completely new look and a new feel and new features of WinUI 3. So basically all the stuff you know from those modern or, or Windows 10 applications. And however, like as I see as a developer, um, this only makes sense if you can afford to stop with feature development for a while and focus entirely on UI. Well, or your app only has a manageable UI size, but only then it makes sense to like say like, okay, we make a completely full stop and just throw away the old UI and go in with the new. Um, but what if your application consists of many windows, tabs, and so on? Well, this is where XAML Islands will shine. With XAML Islands, you can modernize certain parts of your application with WinUI. Um, this will basically allow you uh, an ad adoption of WinUI at your own pace. Um, so you can host any built-in WinUI control and as well as your own custom controls inside of your desktop app. 
um, along with functionality only known from UWP before, UWP before such as input support, web views, and so on. Um, you can basically, uh, you should basically start your modernization journey where it would be most impactful. And um, the XAML Islands is also not only available to those Win32 desktop apps, but also to manage desktop apps, for example, to WinForms or WPF. So you can start enhancing your WinForms or WPF applications as well. Um, and what happens is basically that the XAML islands uh, are created by using the UWP XAML hosting API, which consists of several WinRT classes and comment interfaces. And those were introduced with Windows 10 1903. And through that layer, so to say, um, this functionality will be made available to your uh, application, or basically it will run in its own container or island. As the name says. So, um, how does it look with a real demo? Um, let me uh, quickly describe what I'm trying to do. So, in my demo, I have basically started with an uh, with a regular MFC shell uh, and started enhancing this with various UI controls with a better tree view. We've seen the tree view before, an image preview, inking, direct 3D renderer, a media player. So um, just to give you a quick look how my application looked before. So this one is like the plain old boring MFC application template. As you can see, we have like a tree view here as well, but this tree view doesn't allow any drag and drop and stuff like that. So this comes all by default. And if you want to have some special functionality, you obviously need to implement this. And as you have seen with the uh, um, with the with the control sample app, we have seen so so stuff like drag and drop were already built in. So now I have added this to my uh, MFC app. And uh, as you can see, I have this fancy um, tree view here with uh, the logos, with drag and drop, and all those amazing things, and with the possibility to make it all kaput again. And um, yeah, so this is basically the tree view, tree view I have added, but that's obviously not all. So, um, as you can see, I have added the, uh, a nice picture, probably not very spectacular, but if I click that button, as you can see, I'm rendering a 3D model inside of my MFC application. I mean, yes, I can hear you. You can do this as well, obviously, but this one is, I don't know, like 20 lines of XAML code, and I think you're not able to do this in MFC in 20 lines of code or even XAML code. Um, other features I've added were, were for example, the inking. Um, I've described or showcased it earlier. I can start, for example, highlighting things here or showcase my amazing painting skills. Um, <laughs> I have added uh, pictures. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not on a touch device now because those, the, the image uh, preview would also support uh, pinch and zoom, but yeah, well, doesn't work now, obviously. And then I've also added the media player. As you can see, I'm just playing an MP4 video. This is quite tricky on MFC because um, the you you have you would have to do go you would have to do all the code, use all the codecs and decode this by yourself and rendering this on a surface and all those things. And here. I mean, you have seen this, I don't know, like two lines of XAML code, which were needed in order to um, just do, uh, just play the video of an MP4 file. Now, um, let's quickly jump over to Visual Studio in order to see what I actually did. So, um, what I had was basically this um, MFC application here. This is basically my, my first project. And then I added a, a WinUI UWP application or on top of it, like another project on it. And uh, for C++, obviously, because 
Why not? <laughs> no, because I had to. As, as I said, like it's only available. It's only the I can only share it that way. And um, then the next thing would were what basically adding my uh, controls. So I have my media player control, for example, that is added. I have my image preview user control added, and I also added my view models which I bound in the code, uh, in my C++ files, which I bound to, to the view model properties and all those things. So basically, I did the regular UWP uh, XAML work in order to set up my controls. And then on top of it, I um, um, made the uh, application class based on uh, the XAML host or XAML host XAML application, where the XAML application is something very special because it's uh, basically wrapping up all the plumbing. I could also use the XAML host, but then I would have to use the configure the XAML host, so I just could go with the XAML application, and then it's basically does everything for me. And this is basically it, except for I had to uh, minor things like adding this dummy exe here so I can so the Visual Studio linker works against this one and can work on the MFC side, but this is basically just plumbing. And the next thing, and this is basically everything that needs to be done on the on the on the WinUI side. And the next thing is basically on the MFC side, I need to add the app manifest uh, in which I uh, get an extend or get an get a, a hold or make the XAML application of the of my WinUI application like activated activatable and obviously I pull some additional uh, dependencies and that's basically it it's then only some plumbing and configuration left in my uh, view tree CPP of my MFC uh, page so um, I added uh, some configuration. Um, as you can see, I'm reacting on uh, on uh, events here and stuff like that. And as you can see, I'm also providing both uh, store apps, store app paths or path styles, and MFC path styles. So that way, my application could run in a in a UWP or a Windows Store context as well as in Win32 context. So I still offer both ways of running the application. And basically, that's it. Well, I mean, well, not quite. I mean, there's some more fine tuning required, but this is basically this is the basic steps. So um, yeah, basically that's it. So you can follow the documentation on docs.microsoft.com or in our Windows App Consult plug. And, but with those, let's say, easy steps, this could be basically your first step uh, modernizing your application. Um, if you are interested in more resources, then obviously go to the AKA MS uh, WinUI 3 page. This lists all the resources. It's on docs.microsoft.com. Um, there is on GitHub is the project reunion um, project where you can see where we are at, where, what's the next steps. Um, if you're interested in Uno, check platform.uno. If you're interested in reading even more hands-on samples on how to use uh, WinUI, how to go with the app modernization, how to work with XAML islands, um, go for the App Consult blog at AKMS slash App Consult blog. And obviously, if you like the comic, go to XKCD because why not? Um, that's it. Um, reach out to me if you, have any, if you have any further questions. My handle is on GitHub and LinkedIn and Twitter, always mploggers. And we are also, my friend Matteo Pagani and I are also releasing regularly YouTube, we call it podcast, but it's basically a video cast about WinUI build. Next week Ignite, we just showed another uh, episode today about uh, next week's Ignite and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's it. If, thank you very much. If you have questions, shoot it.
Uh, could you go over uh, how this all fits or how this comes together with Fluent UI? Because that's what I'm mainly interested in. And um, so Fluent UI is the design paradigm. Sorry, go ahead. I don't quite understand the connection yet. So maybe I'm getting something wrong technology wise. Fluent UI, Fluent UI is basically like the description of the look. It's not that Fluent UI is um, some kind of very special technology. It just says like, okay, if you want to use uh, controls in that matter, you it, it will be suggested like, uh, for example, use a couple of shadings and stuff like that. So it's not that Fluent UI is some kind of technology, but more like this type of style guide. Well, for example, um, How's this thing called with what Google does on Android? It's mm -hmm. not material okay. design. Material design, exactly. So it's not really a technology, but it's like some kind of design patterns. All right. And obviously, uh, and the the relation to fluent design is that the fluent design is base is the base for the look of our of our controls. It's already built into UWP, at least partially, and it's being, it will be the entire base for WinUI 3. So um, every WinUI 3 control will be fluent design compatible and will support this um, shine through and all those features if you want to use those. Um, regarding the chat, I don't know, Marvin, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> uh, what kind of app are you thinking about developing next? I'm curious. <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know. Because I think it's a um, very cool tool to, yeah, to develop. <laughs> uh, nearly everything so i just want to have uh, a simple application before yeah but I, th I think with this could be also an alternative for the mcc um, uh, leader management tool or uh, isn't it what do you think Martin? Uh, I was just curious if you have a concrete product because you were talking in the chat that you want to, or you soon be a WinUI professional developer. And I have to admit to my point that I got kind of stuck somewhere on the uh, web stack train. However, uh -huh. I think like the native technologies are so interesting. For me, it's always like what could be a project where this could be applied where I have some benefit and I could try things out. So that was why I'm asking. Oh, OK. So for me, it's uh, very interesting uh, because uh, uh, with a yeah, with a sign box, with a um, yeah. <laughs> um, what what was the name for? Where where you can draw. <laughs> um, I think the inking. Uh, yeah, inking. Yes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think uh, with this we can do yeah many things uh, because yeah, it's uh, it's a tool where you can where you can get everything out of your surface, out of uh, uh, t touching. Surf surface on the surface, uh, yeah, and well, <laughs> well, the point the point is many of those things are probably already available for UWP. Yeah. Um. So that's why you, I mean, you could basically 
So you could basically start today building your UWP app and add inking and many of those capabilities already. Um, however, if you, for example, want to build or don't want to build an application that is meant for the store apps, so to say, but just can be like run like from an executable, as you know it from the, let's say, regular Windows Win32 applications, then this one, this new technology will give you basically all the tools you need. For example, so you can basically have an application that run, that has an installer that needs to be installed, can access all your, can access the registry, can access all the files on your computer like you're used to, but can come with this type of very special design pattern, the Fluent UI design pattern. And although, and all those neat extra features like the inking, as you said, for example, or the map control. I didn't go through the or into the map control. Um, so basically, you can have a single control. Say like, okay, it's a map from that point, and then get started. And this is pretty easy to develop. And the good thing is also that you are not basically bound to working with C++ anymore, but you can also do this with C Sharp, for example. Or if you are not amused from C Sharp with C Sharp, you want to go with C++, you can do this as well. And there's also experimental Rust builds. So if any one of you is interested in Rust, keep an eye out, there will be some things coming. Um, for us, maybe additional for as an explanation for us as like for us as a company, um, we see that many applications are basically still stuck in this uh, other paradigms, and we would really like to move the developers forward, but we can't because they are basically stuck in their Win32 world, and we can't they can't basically make use of the new features that we are offering because they would need to go for the UWP route. And obviously this doesn't work because of company policies and whatnot. And so this is also like great way forward for those developers that were still are still maintaining old apps and would like to make use of newer features, but can't right now. So that's regarding uh, legacy apps and uh, however there is a question in the stream so that's kind of around a couple of corners but dominic forwarded it in the chat here so i'll read it out to you uh, if you are new to uwp and win ui development does it make sense to learn win ui 2 first or should you get started with win ui 3 immediately um I would go with VinUI still go with VinUI 2 because as I said, many of the of the things that are valid for WinUI 2 and UWP are still valid for UWP uh, WinUI uh, 3. So it's basically uh, so it's basically you're not losing anything when learning this. It's just like that at, at some point you will get something extra. It's not th that's why I, I, I had this UWP um, um, movement forward is this topic was pretty short because it's basically so easy. You just have to change a couple of namespaces and you're good to go. So go with UWP, start learning summer, and uh, this is basically the tools you will need. Okay, are there any further questions? If that's not the case, then thanks, Mark, for being here. Sorry for my delay. Uh, I will definitely watch the video because reading the chat seems it was a really great and awesome talk. Okay, I didn't read the chat yet. I probably need to, oh. Okay. So I think is das geil and copy and paste with a heart.
seems to be really good. And yeah, I mean, just look at the example application. You basically have a beautiful UI, and all you have to do is copy a couple of lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, this this uh, this application is really awesome. So um, the XAML controls gallery. I mean, we had this thing before for WPF and for Silverlight, but it wasn't that. It, it didn't felt that complete um, like this one does. So yeah, obviously, use it. Use it. It's there. For, it's it's exactly the purpose. One one thing. There's a similar app available, so it's not all the controls. I mean, this is all the official controls we we are offering, but there's a community toolkit, community toolkit, uh, which also brings its own application that you can also try. So um, if you don't find your control there, there might be other controls also waiting for you that are obviously fully compatible with WinUI three then. Okay, in this case, I think there are no remaining questions. Thanks again um, for being here. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope the people were quite productive for you too. Yeah, uh, one more thing though, um, if you're interested, next week is Ignite, and we are, I guess you still know this from Build, we are still, or we are again offering this type of one-to-one -one consultations uh, as well. So if anyone in the audience are now struggling or understanding or still have questions, then just go to the MyIgnite site, uh, myignite.microsoft.com, I think, and just I mean, obviously, you have to log in, and then you can just start booking one of these consultations and uh, ask your questions. Yeah, that sounds great. Perhaps for my research project, I can do that. Go for it. <laughs> All right, great. OK. Yes, until you'll have immediately like a bunch of people to answer your survey. <laughs> <laughs> great. Awesome. OK, great. Okay. Um, thanks for having me. And thanks um, for here. have a great evening, right? Yeah, you too. And I think we currently don't have another lecture in our uh, queue. So keep checking on the web page, and then you will find out whether there is another lecture at home. So perhaps once a week is enough to find the latest dates. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.